Vintage lenses can be a video creator's secret weapon. You can own one of the lenses that was used on the production of The Mandalorian for less than $300. I firmly believe that filmmakers and video creators should invest their money in vintage lenses rather than cinema lenses. Let me explain. My name is Edmund Elijah, and I'm a director of photography based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. My goal for this channel is to provide educational and practical resources for filmmakers and video creators. Today, we're going to talk about vintage lenses and why you should consider adding them to your kit. For the last two years, I've been building a set of vintage Nikkor AIS Prime lenses. And during this time, I have sold or traded all of my modern lenses to include Canon L series glass and Sigma art glass. Because after a few months, I noticed that I was using the Nikkor AIS Primes exclusively. And it was a difficult decision to make, but I knew that I wanted to go all in. What about cinema lenses? So why have I invested my money in vintage photography lenses and not cinema lenses? Typically, productions use cinema-specific lenses for manufacturers like Zeiss, Cook, or Ari due to their build quality, optical characteristics, and additional features that are specifically useful for motion picture production. These include a declicked aperture for smooth exposure changes, cinema standard focus gears for use with follow focus systems, or markings on both sides of the lens for easier use by camera operators and camera assistants. However, it's not unheard of for filmmakers to use photography lenses in their productions. Keep in mind, vintage lenses aren't exclusive to lower budget productions. They are often sought after by filmmakers who are looking for a certain aesthetic that only vintage lenses can provide. Here are a few reasons why filmmakers may choose to use vintage lenses over modern lenses. Aesthetic. Vintage lenses produce a unique look that many modern lenses cannot replicate. This may include softer focus, unique bokeh, lower contrast, or a particular color rendition. These characteristics can evoke a certain mood or feeling that contributes to the storytelling. Character. Vintage lenses often have flaws such as chromatic aberration, lens flares, or spherical aberration that can add character to an image. While modern lenses are often designed to minimize these characteristics, some filmmakers may seek them out as a creative tool. Cost. Vintage lenses, especially those that were designed for still photography, can often be acquired for less cost than modern cinema lenses. This makes them an attractive option for filmmakers who do not have the budget for cinema lenses. Craft. Vintage lenses, especially those from the pre-autofocus era, are fully manual. Many cinematographers appreciate the tangible, hands-on feel of manually controlling focus and aperture, which isn't often found when using modern-day photography lenses. The challenges of using vintage lenses. However, there are also challenges when using vintage lenses for cinematography. These can include the lack of cinema-specific features like follow-focus gears, T-stop markings, or declicked aperture rings. Some filmmakers and lens companies rehouse vintage photography lenses in new lens bodies that add these features and adapt them for cinema use. Others, like myself, will modify our lenses with products purchased from SimMod. These products include follow focus gears, conversion kits, custom lens caps, and more. Anything that you need to modify your vintage lens for cinema use can be purchased at simmodlens.com. So what lenses do I own? I'm not finished building my set. 
I'm close, but there are a few more lenses that I need before I can consider my set complete. Currently, I have the following lenses. 20 millimeter f 2.8, 24 millimeter f 2.0, 28 millimeter f 2.8, 35 millimeter f 1.4, 35 millimeter f 2.0, 50 millimeter f 1.4, 55 millimeter f 2.8 macro, 85 millimeter f 1.4, 105 millimeter f 2.5. I've used these lenses on several different projects with several different camera bodies. Because even though they originally created to be mounted onto Nikon bodies, the F mount can be converted to be used with many modern day cinema cameras, as well as nearly every mirrorless camera on the market. And that's great, but what really stood out to me was that I can convert the F mount to EF mount and use them with the focal reducer on my Canon C70. Last year, I was invited to a workshop by Canon where we shot several mini documentaries around Portland, Oregon. We were provided with Canon's full arsenal of equipment, their cinema bodies, their cinema lenses, their mirrorless bodies, and their RF glass. But as the director of photography, I chose to use my vintage Nikkor AIS primes, paired with two Canon C70s and a Canon C300 Mark III. It was a bold decision to make, especially since we were working very closely with representatives from Canon. But these lenses give me what I want and they have become an extension of myself as a cinematographer. Additionally, another reason why you should consider building a set of vintage lenses is because you can do it slowly. You can purchase the essential lenses affordably and wait to purchase lenses like a 15 millimeter or a 200 millimeter later. Although it is your shooting style that will dictate which lenses you need to purchase first. So how do you decide what lens to buy? What if you don't know where to begin? And how do you determine which lens is best for you? When you are purchasing a lens, there are several factors that you need to keep in mind. Focal length. This is the basic description of a lens. It's usually expressed in millimeters. For example, 35 millimeters or 50 millimeters. A lower number is a wider lens, while a higher number is a tighter lens. You'll need to decide what type of shots define your style. Do you like ultra wide shots? What about extreme close ups? You may need to experiment first in order to determine the best focal length for you. Aperture. This is the opening of the lens through which light travels. It's expressed in f-stops or t-stops, like 1.4, 2.0, 2.8, and so on. The smaller the number, the larger the aperture, which means more light can enter the lens. An aperture like 1.4 provides a shallower depth of field, which will give you a blurry background effect, referred to as bokeh. An aperture like 8.0 provides a deep depth of field, which can provide an image where your subject and the background are both in focus. This is often misidentified or mislabeled as an amateur mistake, but in reality, a deep depth of field can be very cinematic. Do not base your lens choice solely off of the lens's ability to provide a blurry background. Lens mount. Make sure that the lens is compatible with your camera body. If you own a mirrorless camera, you shouldn't have to worry about this. Which means that with affordable adapters, you can mount nearly any lens to your camera body. Additionally, you may want a pair of vintage lens with a focal reducer. However, when you use a focal reducer, you are effectively filling in the space where an adapter would go which means that there are less lenses that will work for you. Keep in mind, 
Most photography lenses are full frame and were designed to be used with full frame camera bodies. Some cinema cameras, like my Canon C70, have a super 35 millimeter sensor. Although photography lenses have been used to shoot movies on super 35 millimeter film in the past, focal reducers or speed boosters can be used to allow filmmakers to achieve a field of view that would be similar to what you would get with a full frame camera. However, focal reducers have limitations as well as issues that may negatively impact your image quality. Additionally, if I removed the focal reducer from my camera, the number of lenses that I could now adapt to it would grow significantly. Price. Lenses can range from a couple hundred dollars to several thousand dollars. You'll want to set a budget for yourself before you begin building a set. For me, I choose to spend a little extra and purchase lenses from KEH and Blue Moon. I trust these sources completely, but I do pay a little more than what you could find on eBay or Facebook Marketplace. So if you choose to build a set with Nikkor Primes, I guarantee you could put together an incredible set of lenses for less than $3,000. But if you were to put that $3,000 towards cinema lenses, you could buy one two, and maybe three extremely low-end cinema lenses. With vintage lenses, you get both quality and quantity. But if you go with cinema lenses, the quantity drops significantly. And the quality, depending on what manufacturer you go with, may not be nearly as good. Quality and condition. When purchasing vintage lenses and used lenses, you have to consider the condition of the lens. Check for any scratches on the elements or dust in the lens. Check for haze, separation, and fungus. Do a thorough inspection of the lens before you purchase it. Or, as I mentioned, purchase the lens from a reputable dealer or a trusted seller. And if you can, ask to test the lens out before you purchase it. Purpose. Are you looking for a lens that can handle a variety of situations? Or are you looking for a lens that has a specific look? Zoom lenses offer more flexibility, while prime lenses offer superior image quality. Remember, there's no best lens for everybody. It depends on your shooting style, your needs, and your budget. It's always a good idea to do your research, read reviews, or rent a lens before you purchase it. To sum it all up, there are many reasons why you should consider building a set of vintage lenses. Vintage lenses can be adapted to a wide range of modern camera mounts, providing a lot of flexibility, and allow filmmakers to experiment with a variety of optical looks and characteristics. Additionally, vintage lenses were built to last, which means that finding high quality vintage lenses isn't extremely difficult especially when you consider that most video creators like to use autofocus. That means that vintage lenses remain affordable. So before prices begin to skyrocket, I highly recommend that you start building a set of vintage lenses. If you've liked the color grade in my video, I use Phantom LUTs and Dehancer. Be sure to check them out in the description below. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel for more educational and practical resources for filmmakers and video creators. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll see you soon.